90.3 LPFM, the Sancho Local Show, man. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. We got a, a very, 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 very special guest on the line right now. Are you there, Danny? I'm right here. All right, man. I want to thank you for uh, calling in, man. It, it means a lot to me and it means a lot to the station. Um, you know, to just just because you're one of the um, staples, I, I mean, I've watched your movie over and over and over again. My, my uh, DVD is worn out, man. And, uh, like, I knew I knew you made, you know, great movies when I saw them in Walmart, man. I'm like, dude, <laughs> these got to these gotta be – Danny De La Paz is the man. I mean, he's been on American Me. He's been on Boulevard Nights. And I, I know you've done a lot of other work that I'm, I probably, you know, will forget to mention because you just – you have a great body of work. But, uh, man, thank you for being on, man. Oh, you're welcome. It's it's um, <clears throat> you know now in my um, my senior years, I guess you could say, um, you know there's a lot of looking back at the stuff that you know I've done years ago, because now so many people are catching up because of the internet, you know, and because of the um, accessibility that everybody has to movies that were made way back in the day, you know, that's just at people's fingertips now, really, all the different platforms they have for showing all these films. And a lot of these older films are getting a lot of appreciation now. So, no, I, I'm enjoying it. I don't mind looking back, and I'm I'm still still moving forward, too. So Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm, that's, I'm that was, a good place right now. That was my next question, man. I mean, you've seen the transition from what you used to do, and I know you're doing a lot of new stuff now, man. What have you been up to? I mean, what... What new stuff are you working on? Well, I'll tell you what's going on right now. <clears throat> I'm working basically on three projects. Okay. As an actor, I'm going to make another movie. Nice. Uh, we start shooting on the 16th of this month on uh, the SC Face. You know, um, and, and Independence what, Day. What movie? Ironically what, enough. Can you, can you give us a little this, bit of this insight? Is a, this is a new Chicano film by the writer-director Alfredo Ramos, who I've worked with many times before. Alfredo was the one that wrote and directed Road Dogs. Okay. And uh, the last film I did, Kill Capone, which is a gangster film, uh -huh. but a more modern gangster film. Not for kids, though. Um, <laughs> and this is his latest project. And what it is, is it's called Tomorrow We Laugh. And Tomorrow We Laugh is a story about a Chicano family living in Los Angeles that are dealing with some mental health issues oh yeah we we actually had somebody um on the program a, a while back uh is this kind of like a suicide issue or is this me just mental issues in general um no I, I play a father with a couple of grown sons and uh my wife in the movie played by diana ortelli who was also an american me mm -hmm. um she has dementia okay and she's at she's at the point now where she's not recognizing her kids and she's off in her own private Idaho, I guess you could say, uh -huh. um, in some other world that none of us know where she's at. She's at the point now though, where it's gotten to the point where she's going to have to be put away somewhere and get proper care. She, she won't be able to stay there in the home anymore. And, um, there's a lot of disconnection in the family because my character who is the head of the family has been a hard ass on his two sons. Right. And he's got, kind of you know bad relationships with both of them and uh, now with the wife uh, having dementia it's like his whole world is coming apart at the seams and uh, you know he is a very stubborn proud kind of guy and it's just a great great script you know it, it's very dramatic but it also has a lot of humor in the two which is typical of Alfredo Ramos to put humor in with a with a serious drama like that it makes it easier to swallow I think for the audience you know Right. And, and, um, you know, with this new film that's coming out, uh, tell, tell everybody in radio land where they can, um, find you, like whether it's, whether it's your social media or, um, what website they can go to, to keep up with all the new updates on Danny de la Paz. Well, um, my Facebook page under my name, under Danny de la Paz is the page where I usually post things on there about, you know, my appearances or where I'm going to be or what I'm up to or whatever. And I will start posting about the film. We've just begun to rehearse now, and we're going to start shooting, like I said, on the 16th. Right. So um, I will post when the time is appropriate for me to post on there to keep people posted on what's going on. Right. And besides that film, I've been working on a documentary, which is just about to be finished this year. We've been on it for uh, – it'll be three years now. 
by the time we finished it up, three years that I've been on this as a producer. I love it's documentaries. A story of a lat- it's a story of a, of a Latino man. I love documentaries, too. I really do. And that's why I wanted to work on this one. But this is a story of a Latino man and his life. He passed away a few years ago at the age of almost 90, I think. And um, he's one of those unsung heroes. Oh, wow. That um, his story needs to be told. His name was Jose Saria. And he was the first gay man to run for public office. This is about 11 years before Harvey Milk. Okay. And that, remember that movie that Sean Penn did where he played yeah. Harvey Milk, the I, gay politician? Yeah, so this I do man, This man was 11 years before Harvey Milk. No one knows this guy. They don't know his name. They don't know anything about him, but his life is fascinating. And a good friend of mine, Joe Castell, is the uh, director and the, the writer of this, and he was a personal friend of this man, Jose Saria. And over 20 years, Joe documented this man's life on video, and now he's taken 20 years of those videotapes and also thrown in some new stuff, new interviews of people who know who this man is and what he did, what he accomplished. And it's a, you know, beautiful, it's a beautiful, beautiful film. I'm so proud of it. It's called um, Nelly Queen, The Life and Times of Jose Saria. And, and is that going to be on Netflix or HBO? I mean, where, where, where can they see that at? Well, eventually it's going to find one of those platforms. We don't know which one right now, but eventually right. it is going to find its way to one of those platforms. And as soon as I do know, then I, again, I will let people know on my Facebook page. I'm also on Instagram at Big Puppet on Instagram. And lastly, also with Joe Castell, the guy that wrote and directed this, um, is a project that we've been working on for over 20 years, and that's a true story. It's called Hero Street, okay. and it's the story about eight Chicanos who went off to fight in World War II and never came back, and they all grew up together on the same little two-block radius in Silvis, Illinois. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot so, of there's a lot of Chicanos that have went to war, and they're they are really the unsung heroes, man. And I saw a documentary on a PBS the other day about uh, about that Mexican Americans fighting in World War II and in World War One. And so it's great that you know your body of work is is just continuing to grow, and you're covering these things. I mean, um, I have a real deep appreciation for documentaries, man. I'm, I'm always watching documentaries. And um, I know that I'm looking forward to watching yours. I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing your new movie. And um, I, I'm sure the public is, too. Well, you know, it's been five years since we did Kill Capone. I had a, a small role in it, but it was a nice role. I got to say things I really wanted to say in that film, playing a, a veterano in a wheelchair. Yeah. Um, paraplegic in a wheelchair. But now this, this film is really, it's probably the best role for me since Boulevard Nights. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful script. And there's only four or five of us in the whole film. That's it. It's a very small, character-driven piece. I just think a lot of people are really, really, really going to be blown away by it. It's, it's beautifully written, and he's cast it really, really well. Basically, he wrote it for everybody that's in it. Mm-hmm. It was written for each actor. Okay. So the, there wasn't any casting done necessarily. He knew who he wanted to be in it, and he asked them beforehand if they would be involved. And when everybody said yes, then he went ahead and wrote the script, tailoring each role for each individual actor. So you can imagine how special that is to have somebody willing to do that for you. To um, like they like they make a suit that fits you perfectly, you know? Right. So so I mean, it. I think it's more personal that way, and and I think uh, people can probably sense the authenticity of of the film when they see it. So well, in the writing of it too, because a lot of his personal experience and his relationship with his father and his growing up is in this movie, even though it's not autobiographical per se. Right. But there's a lot of truth, that, you know, that he, from his experience that he has instilled into the film, and it's going to be a beautiful movie. Man, I'm going to let everybody know about it when, you know, we're going to start showing it in film festivals early next year. I think in February, hopefully, in uh, San Antonio at the Cine Festival. And then again in um, San Diego and Chicago and maybe New York. And well, uh, hopefully maybe sell it at one of those festivals and get it out there so people can see it. But it's going to be a very good film. And usually with films like that, even smaller, low-budget films, independents, whatever, mm-hmm. they will find their audience. If they're good, they will find their audience. Oh, because, like I always say, cream rises to the top. Definitely, definitely. And if you're ever in Orange County, Danny, man, uh, stop by the station, man. I'd love to have you on when uh, you know when you are ready to promote the films. And uh, we'll get you an in-house interview, man. Oh, I appreciate that. That'd be great. It'd be great to look, get the word out and let people know about, you know, where we're going to have screenings or previews or yeah. when it finally gets released, uh, you know, where they can see it. Yeah, and, and um, 
as a matter of fact, we're continuing to grow as a station too. We're a nonprofit station, man. So we help the community out a lot. And um, our station is going to be expanding in the, the year to come. And, and I'm looking forward to just working with great artists like you and, and helping you get your, your um, message out. And, you know, when that time comes, man, stop by the station. Yeah, I'd be happy to. I really would. I appreciate the offer. Yeah. Do, do, you, mind, uh, do you mind giving the Sancho Loco show a, a little drop? No, not at all. All right. Uh, Danny De La Paz, man, where you tune into? I tune into the Sancho Lopez show, man, whenever I can. Sancho Loco. In effect. Oh, Sancho Loco. Yeah, it's, it's okay, man. Sancho Loco, Sancho Lopez. It's all the Sancho same. Sancho Loco. The Sancho Loco show. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, man. Thank you, Danny. I appreciate you uh, calling, man, and, and giving uh, the people, um, you know, an update on what you've been up to, man. Yeah, I, I appreciate you giving me the chance to do that too. And like I say, as soon as I, as soon as I have more information to give people regarding these projects, um, I, I'll, I'll make sure and put the word out there. Yeah, stay in touch with me, bro. Have a good one, man. Okay. All Thank right. Thank you man. for the opportunity, bro. Appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Peace. Peace.